Facebook's live. We don't, we're, we're, we're live. It's Facebook Live again. This time we're doing it old school by the phone. And we're very fortunate today. Hi, to guys. Have us from the St. Rose office to Linda Cranston. Welcome. Good to be here. Welcome to the show. Okay, cool. All right, so we want to talk about obviously you always finish in, in the top of this office, top of all the. Um, you know the agents that we have in Nevada, and 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 I know that a lot of it is because of your your lead follow up we talked about, also your repeat referral business. Hell, I was at a convention four years ago and I saw your face was like forty feet high at a Brian Matheny uh, seminar. He was talking how right. you, you sent results. me a picture of it. I remember. That's right. I took a picture and sent it to you. And we know that's because, and I know that you use some of the Brian Buffini methods Absolutely. and so forth too. So, mm -hmm. so folks, let's start with like this. Tell them a little about yourself, how long you've been doing this, because we know you, but not everybody out there knows you. Okay, sure. So I actually come from a television background. I was in broadcast news for 12 years, did everything from operating a camera to reporting and anchoring to producing and then stumbled my way into real estate, thankfully due to my husband. I wanted to do some investing, and he's like, hey, why don't you get your license so you can keep your commission? And I'm like, oh, okay. Not really not the reason to get into real estate, but thankfully it all worked out in the long run. Uh, so at first I was doing both TV and real estate at the same time, and I in six months I did two rentals and made 550 bucks, not even enough to cover my uh, fees. Uh, and so then I went full time in real estate. It took me three months to get my first deal closed. And then it took me an entire month to get paid because I was being my own assistant and that didn't work so well. Um, so anyway, I said after that I would never process my own file again and I have kept my word on that. But um, anyway, then it was like the floodgates opened and one year into the business I found Brian Buffini and the working by referral system. And so I know Keller Williams says you can't be a mega agent just working by referral, and I am here to prove them wrong. Uh, over 80% of my business is by referral. It used to be 96%, and then I opened myself up to some internet things, and so over 80% now. And you know, one of the greatest honors that you can get is when you've got repeat clients, and then you've got your clients referring their kids and their grandkids to you, and when you can be their trusted advisor over the years. And I've really done that relationally. You use a layering effect where you are always finding ways to keep yourself top of mind, but then also doing things that build the relationship. So for example, I will do client events throughout the year. Um, every year I'll take what I think is gonna be a big blockbuster movie. I'll rent out an entire movie theater. Um, I get my business vendors to donate door prizes. So we give out door prizes. Um, if it's a character movie, like a Marvel movie, I actually dress up as the character. Wow. Um, we were going to do the Wonder Woman 1984 movie this year, but of course COVID changed that. But um, I've been doing this now, I think, for over five years. Um, it's a lot of fun. Every year I do a gratitude gathering right around Thanksgiving time, and I give away pumpkin pies. I provide little munchies. Um, that great. is really great. Um, so, you know, throughout the year, I'm, I'm doing these little things. And then, you know, the personal things, like I send out handwritten notes. I mean, how often do you actually get a handwritten note or letter in the mail? You know, it's something that is so inexpensive and easy to do. And it always gets read. When you get the mail, if you get something handwritten, it's probably the first thing you're opening. And, you know, it, it takes the gift of your time. And people are always so time crunched. Um, I also regularly call in my database check in with them. You know, coronavirus is such a great time to be relational. Right. And I would call and I would not talk about business. I just called and I'm like, hey, how are you doing? You know, how are you really doing? Um, and then I stopped by with little gifts. So something fun that I did during coronavirus, just to have a little fun with it, nice. um, during such a serious time, was I bought tons of rolls of toilet paper. They were all individually wrapped. <laughs> and so I put a little strip around that said, break a case of emergency. I tied it with a ribbon. And never have I had so much fun dropping off gifts. And so I would leave it at their front door. And then right before I left, I would send a text message saying, hey, you got a little goodie. Check your front door. And the responses I got were hysterical. People like modeling like Vanna with their toilet paper, sending me pictures. Wow. Or just like texting me funny comments. Um, That's it was huge. a lot of fun. That's and huge. then when people were complaining, oh, our hands are getting so dry from, you know, all the hand sanitizer and stuff. Yeah. I mailed like purse size lotions through the mail to them. Cool. And I got some really great responses from that. 
So, and then, you know, once a month I send out a, a newsletter and it's not junk mail, it's like valuable stuff, say at tax time, hey, here's write-offs as a homeowner so you don't pay Uncle Sam more than you have to. And then the middle of the month, then I send out an email with additional information that ties into what I mailed them. So it's constantly front of mind. And then the important thing is, though, is make sure you let them know that you're looking for the business. you got to put the ask out there. Right. So when I give a little gift, it'll have something that, like, ties into asking for the referral. Uh, for example, say, at Valentine, great time to give out chocolates or candy. You know, your referrals are a sweet treat kind of thing. Um, she that so like a always <laughs> something that asks for the referral. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it's important to ask people, you know, as you get to meet new people, because you're always wanting to add fresh blood to your database, is, hey, if you had a friend or a family member who was looking right. to buy or sell, do you have a great real estate agent you would send them to? And if they say, yes, I've got so-and-so, well, that's, that's awesome. That's important to have, you know, right. a trusted advisor. And if not, I would love to be that person. Right. You know, and then you get their information. Right. So, so it's great. Um, so you ask, and then if they say no, and it's kind of tough. Do you know a great real estate agent? Yeah, Delinda, we know you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I love hearing that. Yes, yeah. you do. <laughs> I saw your toilet paper uh, thing on social media. I was like, what a great idea. Oh my gosh, people ate it up. Yeah. It, it was awesome. Did you do the Popeye thing with the popcorn too? And Oh, I've done, yep, just popping by. <laughs> yes, yes, That's absolutely. I feel, I've been doing the gifts now for like 15, 16 years. So, you know, like, if you guys want some ideas, I am um, just a plethora of ideas. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm always happy to share. I'm a giver. Yeah, and you also you also run a few classes here now and then. I showing do. Them the too, I which do. Is, which is very, very awesome. Yes. Yeah, so it's a class called Pathway to Mastery. It teaches you all about how to build your business working by referral. It also delves into the other hats that we wear as a business owner. Like, we get so busy with the COO role of managing our business that often the financial piece gets left behind or the CEO of running the business. So it covers all those different aspects. It goes into negotiating, it goes into awesome dialogues and scripts, um, just a whole host of, like really it's the whole gamut. And then there's they're working on a new one now. Um, there's gonna be three different levels leading to the advanced. And this is kind of the intro class. It's eight weeks long and it is put out by the Feeney and Company and I am a facilitator for that. Okay, cool. Now, okay, so I'm still thinking about the movie idea, which is awesome. Yes. Can you get a park, maybe? It's outside. Yeah, why not? Actually, I have done a park. Yeah. I maybe, did. I mean, for your movie, for your 1984, I mean, I'm assuming mm -hmm. you're going to be Linda Carter, too, right? You're going to dress up? I was going to dress up. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I've been This is Incredible. I've been all sorts of characters. That's awesome. That's such a great idea. Yeah, and what I did one year was, you know, the district... Uh, here in Henderson, they got movies throughout the summer, and so I tied one of my movies into That's there, saying, and I yeah. brought popcorn and candy and gave it out, and yeah, oh, yeah. Great yeah. Idea. So, okay, so the repeat and referral part, which is critical, so that's really your main form of prospecting. It, yes, it is. My like, I don't make cold calls. Yeah. I don't door knock. Um, vir open house-wise, I'm doing virtual open houses right now. Right. Uh, but traditionally, I was not sitting open houses. Um, yeah, I, I don't do any of the, what, I guess old school, I don't know what you would call it, old school yeah, prospecting. Yeah. Really, Grassroom my too. calls are to my database. And what's yeah. nice about that is they like to hear from you. They yeah. like you. So yeah. it's not like I call it and offending someone or getting hung up on. Right. Well, especially with your fun themes. Yes, yes. Your themes so are and right. I often have an excuse. Oh, so my next event that I'm doing is a shred event. I'm renting a big shred truck. We just finished tax season. So Saturday, August 15th. Um, I have sent it out not only to my database, but I have also started marketing my neighborhood and a couple other neighborhoods, so I'm inviting them as well. I'm doing it at my house. I'll have some munchies. Right. And, um, that's yeah. awesome. So. I love it. I'll have, so that's your repeat. Well, and I just have, mm -hmm. I'm curious, your database, do you know how large that is now? That's got to be a pretty good size. Oh, it's several thousand. Yeah, okay. But I know like my A's and A pluses are just under 100. And, you know, I want to keep 100 that I can yeah, explain, manage. Tell them what that means. You're okay, 80, yeah. so A pluses have referred me multiple times, and A's have referred me. So those are the people you want to give your most time to, you want to, I'll give my best gifts to, that kind of thing. B's would refer me if they could. Um, I also put my clients into B's because they are most likely to refer you, especially during a transaction, and you got to make sure you're asking for the referral during the transaction. I actually set it up from the start that I'm expecting their referrals and that I am gonna create raving fans out of them and that that's how I've built my business. 
and that I spend all my time focusing on my clients because I feel like that's how I can give the best customer service. So that's why I'm not out there, you know, trying to generate clients and find clients because I can just focus on them. And if they refer me, I can keep giving that kind of service. And then um, C's would refer me if they were taught how. I don't spend any time on my C's. I've got uh, about 800 B's and my C's I've got over 1,500. And then I, normally D is like your delete category. For me, it's my realtor relationships across the country. Nice. And I've got over 800 of those. So, just so that they can refer you business because they're from other parts of the country. Yes, and a lot of my business does come from referrals with the network of relationships I built across the country. That's great. So between your A's and B's, you probably have a couple thousand, it sounds like. No, actually, between A's and B's, I have just shy of a thousand. Okay, cool. So yep. 800, so you get 200 A's between A's and A pluses. Good. No, just under 100 between A and A plus. Oh, okay. All right, good. That's great. I awesome. was up above that and I narrowed it down. Okay. I did some refinement. All right, so is there, is there any type of emailing or... Mm -hmm. uh, so you do that as well. So right, you, you right. I mentioned the newsletter that I sent out. That's right. I'm a value, and then two weeks later, I follow it up with an email that ties into what I sent out. And then we also put that on social media, and then every one of my item of values will feature one of my listings as well. Okay, cool. Now, okay, so that was my next question. Social media, tell us a little about that. How do you incorporate all of this? Right, social media, we have focused mainly on Instagram, and Facebook, I also have a LinkedIn profile. Um, you know, I think that there's just so many things out there and to right. do it well, you need to just pick a couple things. Right, yeah. So, and, and you just keep constantly updating with LinkedIn and, and Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. And I'm lucky I've got a marketing director, so it's not me uh, personally, okay. unless I just happen to go online and want to post something. Yeah. Uh, but yes, we have regular, yeah. So, so it's done regularly by someone. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Okay, so so we wanted to talk about a couple of subjects. The first one was your repeat referral business, which mm -hmm. is ninety percent. It sounds like eighty nine percent of your business. Right. Is there anything else you want to mention about that repeat and referral before I move mm -hmm. on to your lead follow up? Because that was the second topic. Uh, no, I think I think we've covered the it pretty well. I mean, you just want to keep layering, keep out in front of their mind. Be a giver. Keep giving. When you give, like people who are givers will naturally want to give back to you. Right. If people are either wired to refer or they're not, and if someone's not, the opportunity to refer is just going to fly right over their head. But someone like me, I'm a team builder, so I'm very wired to refer. So if I hear someone say, "Oh, I'm, I'm looking," you know, my air conditioning went out. Instantly, I'm going ding, ding, ding. Hey, can I connect you to a great HVAC company? So you'll come to find out who your referrers are in your database. And so what I do to reward these, I didn't re-mention this, yes. is when I do my client events, the parties, I will actually say you are here either because uh, you uh, closed with us in the last year or you have referred us. Right. And so that subtly clues them in that, hey, if I want to say I'm a client this year and I want to come back next year, I need to refer them. Love it. That's a great idea. And so I that, used that, to, was, that was one of my questions. So you, yeah. did, so you have your group of A's and B's, and not only do you work them, but you work it get, get it, you know, towards their sphere of influence as well. Yes. By, by invitations and so forth. Absolutely. I love it. So that just keeps expanding that yeah. group. Yeah. Great. I love it. Brilliant. Brilliant. All right. All right. Awesome. All right. So now, that's, okay, yeah. so that's repeat and referral. Okay. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about your lead follow-up because it sounds like you're really good at that. Your lead follow-up and getting people, like, you know, once you get in contact with somebody, you follow up until you put the transaction together. That's what it sounds like. Yes. Oh, okay. So once I get a client, I tell them they are going to hear from me a minimum of once a week. Okay. So... Friday, until COVID, Friday was my day off. And so I set them up that, hey, Thursday, I'm going to be reaching out to you. And, you know, not that, you know, or if I just talked to you a day or two before with an update, you may not hear from me on Thursday, but not that that's the only time you're going to hear from me. Um, and if I can't get to everyone that day due to appointments, I'll finish up on Saturday. So I've set the expectation. And then, you know, even like the agents on my team, I'll check in with those as well because, I mean, they're my referrals that they're working. Right. So I say, you know, you get both of us. You get kind of two for one. Um, but throughout the process, they're hearing from me at least once a week, you know, while they're listed, while they're in contract. And I, I call them after they close, too, to see how things are going. Make sure you got your money, you know, if it's a seller or if it's a mover. Hey, how's the settling going in? Any surprises? Anything that you need? Any referrals? 
Right. That's so you really, t I mean, you know, you, you really treat your customers and clients well. That's why they keep referring to you. And, to you. and you have a team, yeah. too. We didn't mention that, but we, right. you kind of alluded. So even with the team, you still keep personal contact with all of them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, tell them a little about your team, just so they understand the size okay. of it and so forth. So I focus on the listings. I do like five or less buyers a year. And then I have two buyer specialists. And then I have a full-time marketing director. My husband is the listing manager. And then I also have a transaction manager. And then I have a guy who's kind of a catch-all. He's an inside sales agent scheduling my listing appointments, but then he will go and remove lock boxes. He'll put together our little marketing gifts. He'll send out our mailings, um, kind of whatever we need there. She's a specialist. I love it. Yes. Everybody does their job. Yes, and they're all very good at what they do. Okay, cool. That's so awesome. I love it. All right, so I always ask this question, so I'm going to ask you too. It's my favorite question to ask too as we close here. So and elaborate plenty. So you're a brand new agent. Mm -hmm. Or you're an agent trying to take it to the next level based on your experience, what would be the three most important things you would tell them? Okay, so as I look back to when I was a brand new agent, one of my regrets is I was doing lots of floor time and the frustration was they would schedule appointments and then they would flick. So you're probably not going to want me to say I would ditch the floor time because you need people <laughs> to do floor time, but that is one thing, so honestly, I would change. Um, I would have started working by referral from the get-go um, had I known that system and so now, now help me with that for a second because I know that some of them yes because they've asked me this question too so I'm brand new I don't, mm -hmm. how, do I, how do I work by referral only if I'm brand new oh everybody's got relationships okay I just want to make sure that they yeah understand. I mean who is your bug guy who's your pool guy who cuts your hair who does your nails like Think about all the relationships you have in your life. Go through your phone, through your um, your contacts in your phone. There's your relationships right yeah. there. And there's probably at least a good couple hundred right there. Right. And let's see, something else I thought of that I wouldn't do. Oh, I farmed from the start. And I stuck with it because I know you got to do it for a while. And, um, and that it didn't end up. Work. Like for me, the referrals, that, that is your easiest referral, it's your best referral. I can tell you when I get an internet lead versus a referral, the quality of the client is so different. Right. Like the internet, they don't have the same respect for what you do and they're the ones that are going to try and bargain you down on your commission versus the one that is referred to you is going to be probably like the person that sent them your way. Um, as long as it's a great person in your database, they're going to have great people that they know. Uh, for someone who's looking to take it to the next level, lean into your most recent closings in the last year. Um, lean into your relationships. I mean, like I said, those are your easiest referral. There are people who know, like, and trust you, and those are going to be your best referrals. Yeah. And those internet leads, they don't come with the testimonial, right? Like, Correct. Right? And you were dealing with people, and, and they're talking about, you're talking about, they've been to one of your parties or whatever. So it's a whole different relationship. Plus, the internet people... They're usually being called by other people as well. They are. They don't just sell them to you, they sell them to other people. Oh, as yeah, well. you're up against 5, 10, 20 different, because if they're going on all different kinds of sites, and a lot of those sites send them three realtors at a time, I mean, they're just getting bombarded. Yeah, awesome. All right, so just give them an idea. What did you do it for business last year, just so they have an idea of what you did? That's okay. Um, let's see. Last year, we sold 103, or we did 103 transactions. Closings, yeah. 40.3 million. Right. Okay, good. And how are you doing this year versus last year? Uh, right. So far, we've closed 62. We've got 18 pending. So 62, um, 72. So we're at like 80 between closed and pending. 80 closed and pending, and it's only mm -hmm. July. Yep. So you're ahead of last year's So case. And our goal is to do 127 closings this year, which would be $44 million. Which would be about a 20-something percent increase, right? 21%? Am I doing the math right? 20% percent increase. Mm -hmm. If you do 103 to 127. Yeah, yeah, yeah 20%, 20 increase. But wait a minute, Delinda, didn't you get the memo? There's a pandemic going on and you're way ahead yes. of last year. Oh my gosh. So during the pandemic, we were putting a two a week into contract. Since uh, that quarantine ended, we have had some of our biggest months. I mean, we closed 16, what, two months ago. We've got 14 this month closing. Um, it's been amazing. It's you have 18 awesome. pending right now. Yes, yes. <laughs> she has 18 pending right now. Did you, did you get that? I got that. I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, but just think about it. Okay, so 
the quarantine created pent up demand, so we have a delayed spring market coming out of this. Interest rates below 3%. Okay, in over 17 years of real estate, I've never seen them this low. So that's getting buyers off the fence, and then buyers who had gotten priced out, now they've got more buying power with a low rate, so they can actually afford to get into a home. And then all the relos coming here, there is a massive wave coming from California. A lot of our clients are coming from California, and that's helping to keep our market strong. And then the low inventory. You know, I love I love a seller's market. This is my favorite market. This is great. She's just so positive, right? <laughs> right. So being positive is very helpful, right? See, yeah. a lot of people look for what's going wrong with the market. Well, you know, the, well, the pandemic's going on. People are losing their jobs. But all the things you just said make perfect sense. Like, there's a lot of people moving from California to Nevada, Arizona, even the desert of California. There's a lot of things going on that are making that right. And I've been doing this for 35 years. I, I call the rates free. They're free. Oh, that's what I tell you. I'm like, money has never been cheaper. Yeah. Money is so cheap right now. Yeah, it's funny because I, I saw uh, uh, a headline, 50-year low in interest rates. And I said, how long have they been keeping track? I asked Forrest, how long have they been keeping track of interest rates? About 50 years. So you mean it's an all-time low. There we go. <laughs> I like it. All right. Any final thoughts you want to leave these? This has been incredible, by the way. Any final thoughts you want to leave these wonderful people with? Um... Golly, real estate, okay, I love real estate. It's my passion. But it's obvious, by think, the way. Think about, you get the honor of helping people with, for most of them, will be the biggest transaction ever in their life. So I know our profession is looked down upon, but give incredible service. You will change people's experience, change their mentality about our profession. Feel that it's an honor what you get to do. Enjoy the relationships that you get to build. And oh my gosh, people are trusting you with their finances and their personal information. And you know what I love is there is no glass ceiling. Like we are gonna hit 100 million, that is our goal. And I know it's gonna happen and I have no doubt. But believe in yourself, do those affirmations and know that the sky is the limit, truly. But, I will say, <laughs> there's, a but. Okay, but. there's always a but. <laughs> but you have to be willing to put in the hours, you've gotta be willing to do the stuff that's the big rocks, that's the not fun stuff, to get the fun stuff of the escrows and the closing. So be willing to do the work, be willing to put in the long hours. I have put in many 10, 12, 14 hour days. I can't tell you how many days I've pulled into my driveway and go, when I felt that was a 14 hour day. But you will reap the rewards in the long run. And one final word of advice, don't get so wrapped up in the busyness of the transaction that you forget to keep lead generating because that will lead to peaks and valleys in your business. I do not have peaks and valleys in my business. I never worry about where my next referral is coming from because it is a steady thing and they constantly come in. I can get three referrals in a day. I can get eight referrals in a week. I'm not saying that's every day and every week, but they constantly come in. So don't get wrapped up in the business. Make sure you are still lead generating and that will lead to a steady stream of business and income for life. You have a system. That's, yes, a, that's system. the answer. She has a system. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say this because this, this is the energy I'm getting from you is that uh, you love your job so much that you've never worked a day in your life. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's, you know, when you work in your passion, yeah, it's obvious. you're just having fun. You, yeah. I mean, it's work, but it doesn't feel like work. Yeah, it's very obvious. That's mm -hmm. why you do so well. And uh, did you hear the confidence? No, we're doing $100 million. And I'm like, you know what? I believe you. <laughs> we are. Thank you very much for your time today. Appreciate it.